I want to talk about the pandemic and what impact the pandemic has had on the church, church culture, um, and the changes that have had to have been forced because of the pandemic. Tell me um, the things that your church has had to modify during this time. We had to modify the way we were used to have worship. So normally, our old way of doing it, we come in on at about eight o'clock. Well, that's on Thursday Sunday, but most of the time our Sunday school would start at nine thirty. Everybody come in, we break off to our different classrooms and uh, have Sunday school. Then we come back, we uh, have our children because I try to teach the children how to stand before the people and make a speech. And I, we have each class to come in and, and uh, give a review of what their lesson was all about. So the kids was involved in that and we had a uh, teach in Spanish as far as the little kids coming along. We, we talked Spanish to them. And uh, so we had to, uh, we did let the children recite what their lesson was about. Then we would come in and start at 11 o'clock have our morning worship as far as we have the reading of the announcements. We have uh, uh, pretty much the choir singing various songs and then the preacher get up and preach. Then we do the benedictions. And so from 930 until about quarter to one, we was in church pretty much. And but now with this pandemic, which we was not able to get in church, we started off in the parking lot. Last, the last of March, we had our last service inside the church of last year. So we was in the parking lot. You know me, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm in the parking lot having a good time. And I said, look at here, I said, God just broadened my pulpit because I could walk around all like that. And, you know, everybody else was sitting in the cars, I'm preaching with my microphone and, you know, Beautiful day. I don't think we probably missed two Sundays from being in the parking lot uh, because of the weather condition. That's how God blessed us. About two Sundays, we missed the whole entire summer. And when it started getting hot, we started earlier rather than, you know, coming in. But anyway, we had service in the parking lot the whole entire year from March to uh, until the first Sunday of this month in March when we came back portionally uh, this past Sunday. So we've pretty much been out pretty much close to a year, but we haven't missed a beat as far as preaching the gospel. But some of the things did change, which are called a new normal. Uh, we couldn't lay hands and take in people because we had to stay a certain distance. And plus people didn't you know, feel comfortable getting out the cars and according to the CDC, we had to stay a certain distance. So we still preach. We still, uh, so, so the male chorus did a great job. The male chorus pretty much sung the whole entire time of last year because you know, we were trying to preserve you know, the younger people. So they sung, everybody stayed that distance. So the male chorus sung the whole entire year pretty much. And uh, we did that. And uh, after that, we uh, stayed here about an hour. Started 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, back at home, versus the 9.30 to quarter to one. So you see how much of a cutback that we had to do. And from Bible study, uh, we normally have a few to show up in person. But now, since we uh, had a conference call or Zoom, we, we are attracting a lot more people to be a participants of our Bible study slash Sunday school because we do both. And uh, so we get people as far as Maryland, Greensboro, they are, they are tuning in with us on Bible study night. So we have a pretty good quorum of people who is, uh, you know, getting involved in Bible study. And I believe one of the impact that this pandemic 
that brought them to church, one of them is we don't get comfortable being at home on Wednesday night. So if things open back up, I don't know whether or not we're going to come back face to face on Wednesday night because we done got so comfortable. And not only that, but people done got comfortable staying home on Sunday morning, live streaming, Zooming, and conference call. They done got, and we are attracting a lot of folks. I think I got about a hundred and, I think the first time we went, we hit about 500 some viewers. Then we done got down to about a, right at 190 viewers. So we got to keep that going as far as reaching out so the people make sure they hear the word. So we're going to, when we do go back with the new normal, we're probably going to be doing very what we're doing now, being able to accommodate the people that's coming into the sanctuary, live streaming and conference call and Zooming. We probably you know, still be doing that since it was so effective. Like I said, something good came out of this, out of this pandemic. It wasn't all bad because uh, a lot of people are hearing the gospel in ways that they could not have imagined that they could have, you know, with this uh, live streaming, Facebook and everything. So it's reaching, it reaching the masses out here. So, and that's what one of the scriptures said, Jesus wasn't coming back until the gospel be preached all around the world. So this is one of the good things that come out of this. And there's a lot of other good things that come out of this too. You know, if you want to go back to the schools, if it's a snow day, they just go back to Zoom, uh, to their computers. They still have, have classes, and they don't have to worry about messing up their vacation time, you know, spring breaks and stuff. So there's some good come out of it. And, uh, but that's the only thing that, is, that is, was negative, that we could not, uh, you know, get close to people you like we normally do. But now to me, I feel that one of the downside of this thing is that I don't know whether we gonna be close to each other as we were. The love, the love that we normally would have with each other, it's not gonna be where it was, I don't believe. Cause I can, I can say to myself, if you're not around people and you're not close to people, they're going to take a, if we get back to that point, it's going to be a while because people have been separated. People have been separated and it, it really has, now this is me, it has, it has an effect and when you're not being socially together, rather being socially distanced, it got to have some kind of effect on you. When you've been used to you know, going to people's houses, embracing people, having your Thanksgiving, Christmas meal. So if you're not careful, and I'm only speaking of me, you can get to the place where that, that closeness is not going to be there. It's going to take a while for it to get back. That's just me now. That's my opinion. You know, I got to con continue to remind myself, you know, this is a, only a temporary thing. Um, and I get, I'm going to have to get back to the place that I was at, you know, as far as people, you know, talking on the phone is fine, but they, it's not the same as being, we were made to, uh, to embrace one another. We were made, and, and we, now we have distant ourselves, you know, and that's my take on it. So uh, I think it, it, it did a lot, but so if we get back to the place where we was, it's going to take a while. And they always say in the school system is so far behind, it's going to take them five years for the kids to catch back up. Now, they, now they're debating on whether the colleges is going to lower their standard of receiving people into their schools because the children ain't got so far behind. So it's a lot going on behind this pandemic, you know. So it's not only had the effect on the schools, but it, it like I said, if the church get back to where it was, it's going to take a while. It ain't going to be just like a, you open the door and come back in, you know, and take off where you left off at.